It's finally happened. The head anchor of my own new show. I don't know. I'm concerned about her stamina. Maybe it would be better if she had a co-host. But who? That doesn't matter. Just any guy. Copy that. What? What the? And now, your Plantain Action News team with Janela Santos. And Gonzalo Moreira. Plantain Action News now. Good evening. This is Janela Santos for the Plantain Action News, here with a disgusting vagrant in a suit here to ruin all of my lifelong dreams. Hey, I'm Gonzalo Moreira. It doesn't matter. With the election just around the corner, we thought we'd talk to you about voting, and in particular, the joy of voting, an act so joyous that only 20% of the population chose to do it in the last election. Now, usually when an act is actually joyful, more than one in five people do it. There is a joy to eating, and 100% of people do that. There is also a joy to sex, which 98% of all adults will do at some point in their life. Even Gonzalo, who is actual human garbage. <laughs> but when you take a look at voting in the United States, and Florida in particular, you will see that there is really no joy to it at all. And that is by design. Oh, I know. Voting is super impossible. That's because you're a convicted felon. Ban the box! The trouble with voting in this country, and the reason for its abysmal voter participation rates, is that voting is sometimes an all-day affair. And in most of the country, it is a multiple-day affair that requires voters to pre-register to vote long before the election day, an extra step that disproportionately disenfranchises young and minority voters. Now, you may be watching this at home and saying to yourself, oh wow, that girl is so articulate and competent that there is no need for her to have a co-anchor. And also, that registering to vote is not that hard. But think about what it takes to actually register. You either need to find a stranger with a clipboard to give all your personal information to, which can be shady as fuck, or you need to find a computer to print Sign, date, and mail a voter registration form to the Department of Elections. What, like with paper? Yeah. Like from trees? Yeah. What, I have to sign it with my hand? Yeah. With a pen? Yeah. That's crazy! Who uses pens anymore? What is this, 1982? The process for registering to vote is completely antiquated and is purposefully much harder than it has to be. After Florida's governor, Rick he who Scott, must not be named, after he who must not be named was elected governor in 2010, he signed legislation cracking down on voter registration drives that targeted Democratic-leaning voter organizations such as the League of Women Voters and Rock the Vote. After those laws went into effect, voter registration among young people plummeted faster than my family's use of Facebook. After my aunt Nyorka joined and started posting ASPCA videos to my wall every few hours, now. Throughout 2012 and 2013, he who must not be named- Rick Scott. Rick Scott oversaw multiple controversial voter purges that disenfranchised eligible voters and was eventually ruled illegal. Florida's human snake bat hybrid governor even reduced the number of early voting days available to voters, which caused massive lines on election day, making it, you guessed it, even harder to vote, especially in areas with higher than average black and Hispanic populations. This is an actual picture of people in Miami waiting to vote in November 2012. A line that long is completely inappropriate unless you're waiting for the release of a cell phone in 2016 or soup in 1930. The length of these lines is even worse when you consider that in 2014, Miami-Dade passed a policy that actually prevented voters from leaving their place in line to use the bathroom. I'll just piss myself. That's because you're awful. Now, some of these laws were so unpopular that the governor eventually undid some of them. But the damage had already been done, because by then, voting in Florida had become a confusing, antiquated, and ever-changing process that resulted in the state's older and more conservative voters having a disproportionately louder electoral voice. Uh, uh, but Janellis, does it have to be so difficult to vote? Probably not. Consider Oregon, America's Urban Outfitters, which passed an automatic voter registration program last year that automatically registers eligible voters to vote. Since its implementation, more than 100,000 new voters have been registered. Should in Florida have something like that? Yes, but we probably won't, because from the perspective of those in power, making it easier for everyone to vote erases the influence that elderly white voters have on our politics. And if you are a conservative politician like everyone running the state of Florida, that is bad for business. 
It would be the electoral equivalent of NCIS being canceled and replaced with old episodes of Capaza USA. Under voter registration policies, like the one passed in Oregon, the burden shifts from the individual to the state. There was an effort in the Florida House and Senate to pass a similar policy, but both proposals died. Probably pneumonia. Thanks, Obama. That leaves the possibility of implementing an automatic voter registration by a ballot initiative. But the process of doing so costs millions of dollars, requires more than 683,000 signatures, and would be the subject of attacks from dozens of conservative special interest groups. Well, isn't there anything we can do to make it easier to vote? Yes. And in fact, something is in the pipeline. In 2015, Rick Scott reluctantly signed into law a bill that requires Florida to have an online voter registration system by 2017. That's good news for Florida in general, but suspect when you realize that the implementation date was specifically pushed so it would have no impact on the 2016 presidential election. That's still good, right? Yes, online voter registration is a step in the right direction but it still places the burden on the voter to understand and comply with a com complicated labyrinth of regulations before they can have their voice heard. And the idea that we will be able to register to vote online but still not actually vote online is for many an example of how antiquated our system of democracy is. Many old white people who are against online voting cite concerns that it will cause widespread voter fraud. But these are the same arguments made against online voter registration laws. Arguments that election officials from across the country called perplexing and inaccurate. Think of all the things you can buy online now. You can buy a Tesla online. You can buy a Russian wife online. She, she's from Slovenia. You can even buy a Komodo dragon online. Oh, pussy magnets. Fact. There is not a lot you can't do online right now, except vote. Look, it is 2016. It should not be the case that the poorest and darkest among us are still forced to wait hours in line in our piss just to cast a ballot. It should be as easy to register and vote in our elections as it is to order a pizza, a ride, or a sexual partner. And that's the point. There is a joy to eating. There is a joy to traveling. There is a joy to fucking. But there is no joy in voting any more than there is a joy to traversing any other unnecessarily complicated bureaucratic process. So there is an election in November. And if you're watching this and you have not registered to vote, then you have helped elect whichever candidate that you think is an absolutely horrible fascist who will definitely ruin our country because the deadline to register to vote was October 11th. But if at some point you were lucky enough to have been stopped on the street and asked by a stranger that probably looked like him to fill out an actual piece of paper for them to keep that contains all your private information, and if that stranger didn't just take that information and sell it to the black market, but rather actually send it to the Department of Elections, then remember to vote on November 8th. It won't be fun. There will be no joy to it, but you still have to do it. Unless you support Jill Stein. For real though. Can we have some egg big muffins, please? Um, I haven't had an egg McMuffin. I need this back.